One of the key new features added into Jet Engine 3.5 is the new components features. So let's take a look at how you set this up, get it working, and some of the options we have available. So once you've gone and installed Jet Engine 3.51 or above, we'll have access to it. So let's hop over into the dashboard. If we come into Jet Engine, you'll see we now have listing dash components, whereas before it was just listings. So we'll open this up, and you see I've already created one, but let's add a new component in. So we'll choose the option to add new component. We'll give this a name. So we'll call this CTA1, for example. Now we're going to work with bricks in this example, but you can use this with Elementor, you can use this with Twig, you can use this with native Gutenberg. And depending upon what you use, you will have some different functionality. In Elementor's case, you have a little bit more functionality, and the same thing goes with Twig and so on. So let's take a look at how we work. So we're going to say bricks in this example, and we'll say create component. So now we can start building any component that we want. Now, I'm not going to build one. I'm going to use one that's already pre-built because the designing of it is irrelevant. You can do whatever you want. So this is what we are going to work with. It's a call to action that I've got set up. This is taken from the Brixies library, but you can use anything you want. So now we've got that created. We've got to kind of connect everything up. Now, this is where it's not the smoothest experience inside Bricks at this point in time, unfortunately. We're going to need to have a second window open. So what we're going to do is we'll save this so we've got it committed. We'll open a new tab up, and we'll go back to Jet Engine and Components. And from here, you can see if we hover over, we get Edit Component Settings. So we need to open this up, and now we've got two different types of settings we can control, the content and the styles. Now, the styles at this point in time, especially when it's working with bricks, are relatively limited in what you can do. But one thing I've learned when it comes to Crockerblock is they will release the product or the update with the minimal viable kind of product, as it were, with the minimal features in there. And then over the next couple of months, they will start to add and improve. And within a couple of months, you end up with a much more fully featured set of options. So bear that in mind. You may be looking at this a couple of months down the line. Things may have changed and more features are available. Okay, so the first thing we want is to go into the content controls. And this is where we can control what the end user will have access to to make changes to. So let's add a new control. And this allows us now to map things together. So the first thing is the control label. So if we go back over into our call to action, we'll say this is our heading, our main part of it. So this is the first thing. It's called heading. Now, you don't need to worry about having these all match up, but it does make life a little easier if you do, just so you can see at a, at a glance exactly what relates to what. So this is our heading, first of all. So what we'll do is we'll control label will be set as heading. That will automatically create the control name, but obviously you can edit that if you want to. So you may want to put something like CTA underscore heading, you know, to label things up in a logical fashion. Then you can choose from four different options currently, which is what is the content we're going to be editing. Well, in this case, text is perfectly fine, and you can put in a default value. So where we currently have something like lorem ipsum, let's simply copy that from there pop back over, drop that in the default value. But you can put, again, whatever you want in. Same thing goes now, we can add the next one in. So if we come back over, you can see we've got things like taglines, description, and so on. So let's do a couple more. So we'll go new control, we'll set this as our tagline, control name, text is fine, tagline. Now let's go and add in description. We'll set this to be text area, because you can have a little bit more content inside there. Again, all we can do is you can come back over, we'll copy this lorem ipsum text, just so we have some data inside there. And finally, we'll add the background image. So again, we'll add a new control. We'll call this image control name. This is going to be a single media. And you can put a fallback image if you want to. So we'll say we'll go with something like this one and we'll select it. So now if we say save and go to editor, we've created it from the Jet Engine's component side. Now we need to map it to the template that we've got created. We'll choose image to start off with. We'll come over and delete the placeholder. We'll choose dynamic data. And if we scroll right down to the bottom, you can see there's all our Jet Engine options. So there's image. You can see this is content, Jet Component underscore image. We'll select that option. And you can see that now fills that out for us. Same thing goes if we go to our tagline. So you come over remove the content that's inside there, choose the dynamic data, we'll search for tagline. You can see there's our component, our heading, delete the placeholder content, click our dynamic icon, choose heading. Finally, we'll do our description. So again, let's get rid of all of this dynamic data and we'll come into description. And there we go. 
So we've now have pretty much identical duplicate to what we had before, but this is now a reusable component. So we'll save this, we'll go back into Bricks as normal, and we'll come and add a new page in. Just add a new page, and we'll just call it CTA test. Publish and edit with Bricks. And now if we come over and we do a search for CTA, you can see there is our component. So as we build our library of components out, they'll be listed here. We'll click to add that in, and you see that now puts that component directly inside you. If you take a look on the right hand side though under the structure, instead of seeing all the broken down different pieces like our divs and so on, we just have this one item inside there called CTA1. And if we select it on the left hand side, we've got two different sections, our general and our styles. So if you open up general, you can see this has all the basic information that we've mapped. So for example, we'll change the image, we'll delete this one, we'll choose our own image, we'll say this one and insert, and the background is updated. Change the option from tagline, we'll put some features inside there, and you see that updates in real time. Now, if we come back over and do a search for elements one more time and do CTA again, and add another instance of this in, you can see that reverts back to its initial state. We can select it and we can choose different items. So we may say we'll put this image in, for example, and you can see that updates accordingly. Change this over to something completely different and you see we have different information. So each of these instances is totally standalone and we can control what information comes in on the left hand side by simply selecting the item from the structure panel and setting the values inside here. Now you're not limited there, you can actually do some other pretty cool things. Say for example you want to allow them to control what heading they're using, H1, 2, 3 and so on and so on, you can do that as well. So let's come back in and edit our component settings. We'll add a new component option inside here, so a new control option. We'll give it a label, say heading size. We'll set this to be a select option, and now you can put in the values you want. So we're gonna pop that inside there. So all you need to do is put in the actual value with two colons and then the label itself, the value you want to use. And you can set a default here as well. So we'll say H3, for example, and we'll say save and go to editor. So now what we can do is we can select our heading Come over to the HTML tag. By default, this is set to H3 in this particular design, but we can select that and choose custom. And when we do that, opens up a dynamic tag option. So again, we can click our dynamic data, scroll through until we find what we're looking for, which is the heading size option and select that. And we'll click save. So now we'll come back into our test. So now if we scroll down, you'll see we now have the option for heading size. We can select, and you can see there's our H2, 3, and 4. So let's set this to be something like H4. We'll save this, hop over to our test, and let's just select that element on the page. So there's our heading. And if we take a look at the code, you can see set as H4. So you can see you can give them control over whatever aspect or aspects that you actually want to give them access to. Now, one of the things that's missing at this point in time with the Bricks version, which you can do inside Elementor and maybe inside Twig and Gutenberg and check those out, is that you can use conditional logic. So for example, you may want to say with this button, if no text is inserted, then you don't actually show the button. This isn't available yet inside Bricks Builder, but you can, like I say, do it inside Elementor. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Hopefully though, we won't have to wait too long before it's included in the Bricks functions. Next, let's take a quick look at the styling options. Now this is currently very, very limited. We can only deal with colors, and even then there are some limitations. So let's come back over to our components. We'll edit our CTA. We'll come to the styles control this time, and we'll add a new style control, and we'll just call this text color. Put a default value in, which we're gonna just use white, and we'll say save and go to editor. So now what we can do is we can select our heading in this example, come to our style tab and into our typography and color, scroll right the way to the bottom, change this over to raw, and this is the important thing, you have to change this to raw. And then what you can do is you can use the dynamic data option again, scroll through, and at the bottom you can see there's our text color, which is our style property from Jet Engine. We'll select it and that's put the value inside there. So we'll click save and we are done on there. So now if we come over, Take a look at our example call to actions. We'll choose this first one, open the styles tab up and you see now text color is available to us. We can choose that option from there. Now the important thing here is you can select any of these colors 
and they'll just basically go this kind of gray color. It's not really working very well with the variables at this point in time. So you're gonna need to change this over to the hex value, for example, and then just use the sliders here to adjust what you want. So for example, if you want a blue heading, you can see we can adjust this. I use these sliders, these options are available to us. So it's okay at the moment. It is pretty restrictive what you can do with it, but again, like I say, hopefully this is all gonna be something that will expand as more options are brought into play. Again, I hope that more control is going to be brought in when it comes to working with bricks as opposed to just Elemental and the other tools. So fundamentally, that's how the components feature works in Jet Engine 3.5. There are differences and nuances between what tools you're using. Bricks does seem to have probably the least compatibility with some of the functions right now. So I'm hopeful this will be expanded in the very near future to give us more control. But I think it's a good start. I'd like to see where this goes. Components is definitely a big thing at this point in time. But let me know your thoughts. Let me have your feedback in the comment section down below. All applicable links are in the description. If you want to find out more about working with Jet Engine, check out these videos next. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.